Welcome, welcome to our YouTube channel. It's been a while, like four or five months or something like that. It's been a very long time. I've been seeing all of your messages like, when are you guys coming back? Please come back. And we are back and we are back with a bang. Ah. I am so excited. <laughs> um, this is our woman conversation segment and I really, really love it. It has like a close place in my heart yeah. because I've always wanted to have conversations with women who inspire me. Yeah. Women who inspire not only me, but people around. Yeah. So we have none other than mm-hmm. Gabella Mohale. Yay! <laughs> I wish I had that <laughs> boom, 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 boom sound effect. Yeah, no, Please yeah. introduce yourself well, that's to the question. <laughs> Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. Um, I think on my YouTube, everyone knows that I always say, Hi guys! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. Yes. Um, my name is Cabello Mohale. I I won't I mean I'm a mom and mm-hmm. a wife. I am a content producer, mm-hmm. um, a businesswoman, someone who is in ministry. There's sure. so much. Um actually in therapy, uh my therapist said, those are the things that you do. And sometimes mm-hmm. when people ask, tell us about yourself, sure. we are we we rush so quickly to saying this is what I do, thinking that sure, you know I'm, I'm telling are. you about me. But anyway, I'm a daughter, um, and I love Jesus. Wow. Yeah. Um, for every, I'm sure everybody already knows, but we are all going to Beloved Awakened on yes. the second of September. Yes. Hillsong Church <laughs> in, in Pretoria, Pretoria. will yeah. be there, right? Yeah, but we'll yeah. talk about it as we go along, mm. right? Um, so, Gabelo, thank you so much for agreeing to being a part of this. Um, I've always wanted to have you. Like, you're one of my dream guests, you know uh, that? Like, honestly. Um, please tell us a little bit about yourself, your childhood, how mm-hmm. you grew up, um, and how that has kind of affected some of the choices, like how Beloved Awakened was birthed mm-hmm. and so forth. Okay, so I think that's maybe a, a three questions. In yeah, <laughs> I'm like... I'm asking I'm like that's too many <laughs> no it's fine don't worry I think mm. um okay so like I said my name is Gabelo Ponto Innocentia Chilwani sure. was Chilwani mm-hmm. now Mohale um I am the youngest of three girls sure. so um I've got the oldest sister her name is Rafilwe mm-hmm. little sister Babalo and then myself nice. Gabelo it's actually people call me Ponto at home but mm. um at school I was referred to as Gabelo so okay. we go with Gabelo um, yeah, I grew up in, in a very close knit family with my mom, my dad and my sisters. Mm-hmm. So very, very close knit, sure. um, a family that's full of love, welcoming, mm-hmm. um, and, and, and yeah, just really loving, mm-hmm. you know, um, my childhood. Wow. Uh, very active girl. Sure. Um, I used to say I was a tomboy. I don't mm-hmm. say that anymore. <laughs> Only because I loved playing with with boys, like sure. climbing trees and mm. um, exploring, wow. going on top of the mountain, like as if there were not snakes. Wow. But anyway, um, I loved adventure and I mm-hmm. still do. I think that the child in me still does. Um, yeah, I uh, was an athlete. I sure. uh, was once athlete of the year. Um, wow. Loved netball, loved cross country, mm-hmm. loved athletics, sprints as well, badminton. Like I tried playing a lot of sports, wow. right? And then I, that was in primary school, mm-hmm. by the way. But I was still active in, 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 in high school. So mm-hmm. I went to the National School of the Arts and um, drama was my major mm-hmm. there. So I studied drama, was passionate about drama, I got to matric and I was like, I don't think I... I don't think right now I want to be an actress. Sure. Um, moved to Cape Town, studied at the University of Cape Town mm-hmm. and graduated there. And then God said, well, after seven years of being in Cape Town, we were led to come back to Joburg. Sure. And so here we are. Wow. Got married and here we are. Sure. Yeah. And had a baby. And had a baby. And became self-employed. And became self-employed. Sure. And moved, like I was having a chat with your husband, moved places. Sure. <laughs> it's a lot of transitions yes. in a very short space yes. of time. Yes, yeah. Um. So I've been watching your content. Um. Mm. And recently, like the recent videos, 
you're talking about like a lot of transitions that yeah. you've had to go through, yeah. right? And I think we'll come back to the Beloved Awakened um, topic. But mm. even in your videos, you talk about how difficult 2022 was, but how at the same time it was like one of the best years of your life ever. Yeah. But also, even as you mention what you do, your roles, your different roles that you play, you've had to transition a lot yeah. um, in, the part, in the short space of time. Mm. How have you been navigating those transitions and how have they affected like your mental health? Girl, family, prayer, therapy. <laughs> it's been a lot. So, so just to give context to mm -hmm. everyone watching, we got married in 2020, mm -hmm. um, was with my husband for a good 12 years. Sure. Um, and then we got married in 2020. Six months after that, we found out that we were pregnant. Sure. In that space, I was uh, transitioning from uh, corporate, um, into business. Sure. And then, and then what else? Yes. And then we became, um, content creators. And within that space, we became full-time self-employed. Sure. So it was no longer just business, but we both, my husband and I both became self-employed. Wow. All of that in the space of six months. Right. Sure. Um, and that's a lot. It's a lot. And I don't think we realized how much that can affect a person mm -hmm. until later on. Sure. where we're no longer taking care of ourselves. We're no longer making time for us. Um, everything is just about work, 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 especially I think on my end, I'm already a visionary. Mm -hmm. I'm already a, um, a go-getter. Mm -hmm. I'm already, I actually went to the doctor today and, and one of the things they said was, um, yeah, you can be very stubborn when you, when you want to say, I'm doing this, you're mm -hmm. doing this. But the thing is, you want to do this, you want to do that, you want to do that. And you're not lazy, yes, but you need to calm down, yeah. you know. Um, and the thing is, you want to do this, this and that, and you want to do it on your own. Like, sure. you, it's very hard for you to just delegate. Mm. And it's very hard for me to delegate. So um, it's it's been hard. It's, it's affected us um, on a personal level, but it's also affected us on a marital level. Mm -hmm. It's affected us when it comes to family. It's affected our mental health. Sure. Um, the both of us, because shortly after having a child, not only did I realize that I was struggling with postpartum anxiety and depression, my husband then realized as well that he was struggling with postpartum anxiety, sure. which is something that's not spoken about. Mm -hmm. I did not know that men also struggle with yeah. postpartum um, mm. depression, but it makes sense, especially because he was so involved. Mm -hmm. um, he actually, there's a word, I just don't know it or I've forgotten it, but um he carried some of my symptoms. Like sure. that's how, you know, wow. we, we went through this together. So mm. it makes sense mm. um, that he could experience postpartum um, depression himself. Sure. Um, he obviously is a first time dad as well. Um, and he shared this before, but he grew up without his dad. So now you can imagine he's not only raising, a, a, having to raise a, a daughter, but he's raising a son. Mm. Um, and he's never, he doesn't have a blue, he doesn't have an example sure. of what it looks like. Sure. Apart from the men in his life mm -hmm. that he's allowed himself to conversate with, ask questions, um, be mentored in some way. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a practical example yeah. of what that looks like, right? So he's now having to start again. Sure. And not only that, he's having to ask himself questions like, can I do this? Because that's what parenting will do. Yeah. As a first-time parent, it's natural for anyone to ask, am I able to do this? Sure. You know, it's no longer my six, seven nieces where I babysit and I'm like, yeah, here's your baby. Mm, you can take when yeah. they're sick, go to mommy. Um, when I feel like, okay, you know what? I'm tired. Sure. Here's mommy. Yes. Or here's your grandmother. Yes. No, it's, this is my child. Sure. And I right now, while they're still young, I need to make decisions mm -hmm. for them. I need to make sure that, um, God, I'm stewarding this child's life in the way that you want it to go. I need sure. to make sure that I am spending enough time with God to hear from God mm -hmm. regarding his purpose so that we can steward his life in the right sure. direction. We need to make decisions concerning his life. We need to make sure that he is okay. Sure. And so you get to ask yourself, can I do this? Mm -hmm. You know, um, as a last born, I think it goes without saying I've, I was sheltered a lot mm. and now culture shock i'm married culture sure. shock i have a child mm -hmm. oh my gosh okay i was sheltered am i able to take care of this one sure. um so yeah it came it came with a lot it yeah. came with a, a lot sure. um and it affected a lot of areas mm. um but yeah therapy mm -hmm. prayer 
I think that's the one thing I really am grateful for that we had a relationship with God yeah. prior to all of this. Yeah. Um, and so God, prayer, family, friends, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we, we, that's how we are getting through it because yeah. I can't say we are through, we are actually right in the middle of it sure. and we're going through it. Yeah. So yeah, it's been a lot. And like, even with that, right. Mm-hmm. I think it's easier for a couple who then isn't on screen and has to like hold up this image of we're good, we're happy, we're laughing together, you know, because now you're known. Mm. Even when you go to the grocery store, some people might recognize mm-hmm. you, not even just on Instagram, right? Mm-hmm. But even as you walk around, mm. go about life. So how do you handle that? Like going through so much yeah. as a public figure, as yeah. someone who, and not only on a personal level, but your marriage, right? Yeah. You got married and quickly became both like public figures. Like defining is such a huge platform to be on and you were there everywhere, radio shows, all of these things. So when as a married couple, and these are questions my husband and I have asked ourselves, right? Like even with our platform that's growing, how do we then, when we are going through something, when we are struggling, how do we manage that? Yeah. Um, Look, we, we are learning on the job Mm. (laughs) um we're learning as we go through it um and there's a lot of things that we've learned or mistakes that we've made um and we are having to learn from them um to some extent we're going through some of the consequences of those Mm. mistakes but um they're also lovely lessons that Mm. that we're learning um as well so like i said we are learning as we go Mm -hmm. i i won't lie i can't say we have figured it out Mm -hmm. um my cousin, I can give you a, a story. I was at home. I, I was visiting my parents and my mm-hmm. cousin was there. And I was like, no, we need to go to the store because I want to get something. Yeah. And um, I still had my natural hair out and I hadn't combed it. I hadn't mm-hmm. done anything. And I was about to leave. And my cousin and my mom were like, excuse me, <laughs> where are you going <laughs> exactly. looking like that? Yeah. Do you not remember your work, sure. you know, and that people know you? Sure. And for me, it was like, like why yeah. like i don't care you yeah. know um i don't care but then my work comes with some level yes. of i have to care exactly um so yeah it's 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 something that i, I have to learn sure. i really just have to learn and my husband i guess is is also learning we're mm-hmm. both learning mm-hmm. i mean we can go to the mall and it, sometimes it's even harder now to go to the mall with Micah sure. because my car yes. and it's like yeah i get that it's not being done maliciously but mm-hmm. then it's i'm because i know you on screen it's mm-hmm. as if i know you in yes. real life so it's like my car and it's like wait yes. i don't know who you are like <laughs> yes. i appreciate the love but mm. i don't know who you are and i have to protect this child and it's a lot um and you know learning that okay you and i can have an argument at home but when we go out we have to hey yes. n- not it's not even a, a pretense it's we have to protect mm-hmm. our, our, our marriage um we didn't ask to be public figures it so happened we knew mm-hmm. we had some kind of knowledge because mm-hmm. of what we knew god was going to do in our sure. lives but we didn't know to what extent mm-hmm. and so now that um, it's in motion. We're having to then learn how to protect what God is doing, mm-hmm. um, but also steward what sure. what God is doing, and mm-hmm. also make sure that in in that we are protecting our family, we're protecting each other, we're protecting our marriage because those are priorities to God. Yeah. So yeah, I, we're learning on the job, and it's those little things like. I go to the grocery store for mm. like thirty minutes, mm. not the grocery store, but to the mall. I can mm. budget thirty minutes. But then you will probably have to budget like 10 more minutes of like people wanting to chat, pictures and things like that. And I don't think it's only like negatives and cons. No. I think there have been many pros, right? Like the opportunities and so forth. But I can imagine how it can really affect a marriage when Mm. you're going through it all. But at the same time, you still have something you have. Um, an image to uphold Mm. it's like the i can't go to the mall looking crusty like Mm. i actually have to (laughs) put some effort into little things like that yeah you have to you have to and it it just it comes with the work it comes with yeah um how can i how can i put it to whom much is given much is required Mm -hmm. right um and it just comes with it and so Instead of trying to fight it all the time, sure. it's just finding boundaries, mm-hmm. like yeah, actually establishing boundaries, yeah. um, s- 
honoring those boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, but also understanding that it just comes with the job. Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to even just say job. It comes with, with the position that God has placed mm-hmm. us in. Um, I think the purpose, the, the calling. Purpose, the call, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's just, okay, God, um, teach us, walk mm-hmm. us through, walk with us. I love that. Walk with us. I love that. Um, and your your vulnerability, your transparency, it really helps us. Like, I watch your videos and I don't feel like I'm going through things alone. Like, you mm. know, when you watch and you're like, yes, I can relate. <laughs> like, I'm I don't glad. know if I, you know, like, it takes like a lot of bravery and courage to be as honest as you are. But even as we watch, like for me, I just feel like, thank you, like mm. for being honest and not only telling us the highlight real moments, mm. because I feel like that would for like in a great deal, protect your marriage, like super, super, super. Mm. But thank you for letting us in on the vulnerable sides as well. Yeah. I mean, w- what we're doing, we're called to serve. right? Yeah. So we're not just, sure. um, we're not just given influence just to, um, be in in the public for Mm -hmm. nothing um everything that we do has to be built on the desire to serve and the desire to bring about impact i think my husband always says um and i guess it leads on your question on on purpose Mm -hmm. right um my husband always says there's no purpose greater than people there's no purpose god will never call you to something that's above people it will always be to serve people and so um yeah, everything, everything we say yes to mm-hmm. has to be built on the conviction of serve, service, sure. if, like everything. Um, I was being interviewed for a, a specific uh, magazine or yeah, a piece. And one of the things that were asked, do I remember the question? <laughs> um, I think it was wellness at, oh man, I can't remember the question. Um, I'm not even sure. And I didn't mention what publication it is, mm. so it's fine. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I mentioned was um, even the brands that I, I choose, because we have mm-hmm. an option. So even the brands that I do choose to work with are brands that I know are founded on um, similar values, sure. brands that um, are founded on, because one of the things that I am big on is not only social development, but mm-hmm. individual development, mm-hmm. right? Or human de- development. I don't think we can have social development without human development, mm-hmm. right? And so, and having studied gender studies as well, yes. I am big on women and sure. um, woman equality and women's rights, etc. So even the brands that I do get to work with and I, I am honored to work with mm-hmm. um, because it's a privilege, it is an honor. Um, I make sure that we have similar values. Mm -hmm. I make sure that those brands are for women, Mm -hmm. are for children, are for the family um, because of the conviction that Mm. I have. So, yeah, I don't even know why I was saying that again. I love that, but it leads perfectly into my next question. Yeah, I don't know why I was saying that, but yeah, purpose, (laughs) okay. Um, How do you know Mm. what your purpose or calling is? Because you talk a lot about, I I knew that I was going to be, you know, a public figure because I knew the calling that God had on my life. Like I knew what it is. What, what is it to know? Like, is it you spend time with God and you kind of have a nudging about mm-hmm. what you're supposed to do next? Mm-hmm. Is it almost like you dream it? Like mm-hmm. it, how, how do you know? Mm-hmm. And then I think the next part of the question then is how did you know you were supposed to start beloved awakened? Where did that even come yeah. from? Um, look, I, I, I used to have a particular answer when it came to what is purpose? Mm-hmm. What is your purpose? etc. But my, I think my answer has, has changed, has mm. evolved, right? Um, look, I think <sighs> purpose for me looks like when when I had a conversation with these ladies and they were saying our biggest purpose here on earth is to love God and love people. Mm-hmm. Where the vocation is, mm-hmm. is, is, is God's leading. Sure. Whether you are a tailor at ShopRite, mm-hmm. whether um, you work on screen, whether you're an actress, mm-hmm. whether it is to love God and love people. Mm-hmm. And God um, will give you divine inspiration as to how that is done. Yeah. Um, and so the reason why I say that is for me, purpose has changed from my purpose is to be a doctor. My purpose is to be um, 
a lawyer. A lawyer. Yeah. My purpose. No, my purpose now is to make sure that I am loving God and loving people. Mm -hmm. How God chooses or the channel in which God chooses for that to happen will happen, right? Sure. Um, and so listening to the Holy Spirit day to day, mm -hmm. I wake up today, God, what are you saying about my day? Sure. Um, and saying yes to God, that's me walking in purpose. Mm -hmm. How it looks will change. So today God might say, come to a podcast, mm -hmm. right? Say yes to it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I will wake up in the morning, know what I have to do, pray. Mm -hmm. God, give me the words because I understand it's not just I'm having a conversation mm -hmm. with you or, mm -hmm. or hey, I'm sharing about my life. No, but there's someone on the yeah. other side yeah. that God will position to tune into this sure. podcast. And therefore, God, give me the words to mm -hmm. utter that will speak directly to that person. Sure. Service, mm -hmm. right? That's what it looks like today. Mm -hmm. I'm walking in purpose. Sure. Tomorrow, it might be waking up making sure that I spend time with Micah because mm -hmm. that's another ministry that is priority to mm -hmm. God. Spending time with my, my husband, going mm -hmm. to church, whatever that that looks like, family, that could be purpose as mm -hmm. well. So um, really, it's just waking up, Holy Spirit, what does today look like? Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, and building on, on, on that. That's mm -hmm. purpose for me. Um, and you mentioned how do people know what it is? You know, mm -hmm. is it a knowing within, et cetera? It will look different. Yeah. I think the beautiful thing for me um, or, yeah, something that I'm really honored I got to experience when I was in Cape Town. That's mm -hmm. when I gave my life to the Lord, right? Sure. And I had an amazing community. Mm -hmm. And I had, it just so happened that the church I was in um, was was very big on the prophetic. Mm -hmm. And so we would spend time in prayer. Sure. I you know, was very involved in the church. Mm -hmm. I had friends who were very involved in the church wow. and we would spend time in prayer. Sundays, we knew the whole day you could go to all four mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. um, and there was, co we, we constantly immersed ourselves in sure. prayer. And because we were made aware that God speaks and God mm -hmm. loves to speak, we tapped into that. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's pray for one another. Let's prophesy over sure. one another. And because I was blessed to have that, it, it's amazing that... Um, I had people speak over my life. Mm. I had people tell me, hey, I'm hearing God say this about your life. And I took that so seriously that I had journals and I would write wow. that down. And, and it, it sounds like my experience in Cape Town. Yeah. Yeah. So I had journals and I would write that oh down. My gosh. Um, and I made sure like, and, and so many people would confirm the same sure. thing. And that's how I guess for me, it gave a bit of clarity. And I needed mm -hmm. that clarity mm -hmm. because <laughs> everything else, this... <laughs> This, this comes with it's yeah. a lot and it's very easy to then say god sure. like i shared the one time god speaks words over our lives mm -hmm. god declares words of there's a there's a decreed word upon sure. every person's life but it comes with opposition that word mm -hmm. it will always be tested mm -hmm. and so i needed to be firmly rooted in god this is what you've called me to sure. because the opposition that yeah. comes with that it's intense. if i wasn't established in knowing what mm -hmm. god has called me to i would have been out mm -hmm. like like I would have given up. Yeah. I would give up. Like yeah. I'd say there's no way. Sure. So I think that's unique to me. We're all different. Yes. And and I think God speaks to us or calls us differently. Um, but yeah, I was just surrounded by community. Sure. They got to speak God's word over me. They got to tell me, hey, I'm hearing God say mm. this. Um, I'm hearing God. And I moved to Jobic and I didn't have a lot of that. Yes. <laughs> so I'm so grateful that I yes. had that. Um so yeah, and and honestly, I think for someone else who's listening, spending time with God, yeah. um, being open to Holy Spirit, sure. and allowing Him to be your friend, mm -hmm. um, stillness sometimes, mm. uh, stillness sometimes when you get into your own space with God, sometimes just keep quiet and say, Holy Spirit, what are you? Saying? What are you saying? Yo, this sounds exactly like my Cape Town experience. Yeah. So when I left, because I also studied at UCT. When I left, mm. I kind of had this belief that only the pastor can hear God. Mm. Because it was, we were like super, well me, mm. let me speak for myself. Mm. We were super dependent on okay. like prophetic words from the pastor. Okay. Him laying hands on us. Okay. So I just kind of like, oh, like those are things reserved for the people who are super spiritual, okay. right? Then I went to Cape Town. I went to a prophetic church. Like it is like a super prophetic church, very diverse, like I, I just enjoyed it so much because people, I remember just getting there being like, pe these people genuinely love God. Mm, like it's no a culture. One is, it's, no one is yeah. playing church. Yeah, no one is yes. pretending. Yeah, yeah. Like 
these people love God. Yeah. And I think it was also there that a lot of like my calling and things like that were discovered because mm. I needed that community because mm. I did not think that I could hear God for myself. Mm. Like I needed someone to tell me and those things to be broken, like those beliefs to just be broken yeah. off. And it took people of like just birds of the same feather yeah. and just that passion for God. So I agree like that community is everything yeah. as it pertains to calling and purpose. And because it is so ingrained in our relationship with God, like intimacy with God is a given. Yeah. Spending time with God is a given. And so if you're struggling or you want to start it, then being in the community where it's encouraged, it's nature, it's just what we do. It's what we do. It's yeah. super important. Like I, I so agree. I feel like if I was in a different church in varsity, things would have gone like Definitely. downhill. And yeah. I, I mean, I do want to say two things as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other, uh, if for someone asking, how do I know what my purpose is? Because yes. I remember when I was in Cape Town, um, there was a time where I was like, okay, God, my purpose, my mm. purpose. And I, I said, and I think this is one of the things that um, Beloved is built upon. And yes. I'll share that later. Um, but restored identity awakens purpose. Sure. That's what Holy Spirit sure. said to me. And I'll always carry that. Because sure. I was so focused on my purpose, my purpose. Mm -hmm. And he said, let that go a little. Mm. Let's restore your identity. Because sure. once your identity is restored, purpose will automatically be awakened. Sure. And I always make the, mis the not, not mistakes, I always make the examples that he referred me to mm -hmm. by looking at, for example, Jesus. Mm -hmm. His purpose was very much intertwined with his identity. And I say sure. this by, we know that in Hebrew, name actually is Shem in mm. Hebrew. And it means character. It means the essence of someone, sure. right? Um, the name of the, of Jesus also carried his purpose, mm. Savior. Um, Emmanuel, God is with us, sure. you know? So um, his, his, his purpose was very much intertwined with his identity. Sure. As soon as he walked in, in identity, he walked in purpose, right? Wow. And that's what God would say to me is, let me restore you. Um, let me let me tell you of who I know you to be. And it mm. reminds me of Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed you in your mm. mother's womb, I knew, I knew you. Sure. Before you were born, um, I had set you apart, mm. right? And it's that's in one verse. Before sure. I formed you, I knew you. So God has a knowledge of us, sure. right? He has a knowledge of us before mm -hmm. he even formed us in mm -hmm. our mother's womb. And and before you were born, I had called you. I set you apart to be a prophet who was speaking to yeah. Jeremiah. So I love that. I love that chapter. Yeah. Like, so just getting to know, oh, allowing God to restore who you are. Mm -hmm. Let that happen. And once you are restored in identity, purpose will automatic. You'll flow in purpose. Sure. As a child of God, you will always flow in purpose. Mm -hmm. And then um, being practical as well. For someone who's in corporate saying, mm. I hate my job. Mm. How do I? Sure. Um, be be faithful where you're at now. Mm -hmm. Because nothing goes wasted with God. Sure. Nothing goes wasted sure. with God. So sure. you might be in the corporate space and you hate your job. Mm -hmm. um, change your mind mm -hmm. and say, okay, I'm going to be faithful with mm -hmm. where I am now. Sure. Because God uses everything. Nothing is wasted and everything prepares us wow. for the next season. This season will always prepare us for the next season. Sure. So if you can't be faithful in a space that is uncomfortable to you, that you hate, mm -hmm. how are you going to be faithful with the much, mm. right? Everything that has to do with purpose is never convenient. It's never comfortable. Sure. So if you can't be faithful where you are uncomfortable now and where you're mm -hmm. not happy now, um, you're not going to be able to do that later yeah. on. Because once again, purpose is not all rosy. It's mm -hmm. not always about our happiness. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's, a, like I said, it's service. Sure. You know, so be faithful in the space that you're in now. Mm -hmm. They have to be. Be faithful in the space that you're in <laughs> yes. now. Um, ask God how you can be light because God has positioned you there intentionally. Mm -hmm. And when you begin to have this perception that as a child of God, you become one spirit. That's what one of my favorite verses in, in Corinthians, it says those who are joined together with the Lord have become one spirit with him. Sure. That is deep. It mm. talks about oneness. It talks about intimacy. Sure. So as a child of God, you are purposed and you are positioned in that space for a reason, meaning all of heaven backs you up, mm. meaning you are a channel. Sure. You are a channel um, from the heavenly realm to the mm -hmm. natural realm, sure. you are there intentionally. Sure. So if you, if you then daily say, God, I'm here, mm -hmm. 
who can I speak to mm-hmm. while I'm here? Because you know you will transition. Mm-hmm. Who can I, whose life can I touch mm-hmm. while I'm here? Who can I share your love to while I'm sure. here? How can I um, serve my manager mm-hmm. with a cheerful mm-hmm. heart? How can I serve my boss? Mm-hmm. How can I make the light, uh, the load lighter? Sure. How can I be light mm-hmm. being in this place? Mm-hmm. And then be faithful with the little and God will definitely give you more. Sure. Sure. You know? Yeah. So, so yeah, I think you're answering a, a lot of questions that I have about courage. Mm-hmm. Because Sorry, I Sorry, I didn't answer the awaken. I keep not. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get there. Yeah, I'm going to come back to with it. Holy yes. Spirit, yeah. So, I've, I keep getting these questions about courage. So, I wanted to start a YouTube channel myself. Nah, but I was too afraid. I was like, I, I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know how I'm going to get there. And my husband was like, okay, fine. I know how much this means to you. So I'll start it with you. So that's actually how it became a couple's channel because it was initially supposed to be my own thing. Mm. But I was so fearful um, that I was like, I don't, I don't think I'd ever be able to do it on my own. Mm. And I think purpose, like walking in purpose, sometimes you know what you're passionate about. Sometimes you know what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. Sometimes you know like, yeah, this is the area that has a lot of grace and favor. But you're just so afraid. Mm. You're filled with a lot of self-doubt. How do you then be courageous? Mm. And I think from what you've said, like about restored identity, that answers part of my question about yeah. like knowing who I am and knowing that heaven backs me up. Mm. But also like how if I am, if someone's watching there and saying like I have so much self-doubt, I know what I'm supposed to do or what the next step is, but I'm so fearful of rejection, like what people are going to say, especially if they were rejected, like in the past, they have childhood traumas that have to do with rejection. Like how do you then go about walking in purpose when you're afraid? If I have to be honest with you, just do it afraid. Sure. Um, that's the shortest answer. But um, look, I, I can't, there are many great people or people who are doing great things Mm -hmm. out there who still feel fear, Mm -hmm. who still um, battle self-doubt, who still go through um, insecurities, Mm -hmm. right? I think on my end, um, conviction is what drives me. Mm. So yes, sometimes I'm insecure about something, Mm -hmm. But because I'm convicted to do mm. what I'm doing, I'll do it and then I'll deal with myself later with God. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes God will say, okay, we're not doing this this season because I really need to deal with mm. this. And I think that's why um, uh, Beloved stopped for like three whole mm. years. There's a lot that I was going through. There's sure. no way, there is absolutely no way I would have been able to continue sure. with it. Um, so there are moments where God will say, do it afraid. Mm-hmm. There are many men, great men in the word who were afraid. Mm. Um, but, you know, doing it with Holy Spirit b- makes everything worth it. Yeah. Um, courage is actually a spirit, the Holy Spirit. Mm. I remember when the disciples were in the upper room, um, as soon as the Holy Spirit fell upon them, they yeah, had a boldness to, sure. to, to preach the gospel. Sure. We're looking at Peter. I mean, mm. I love Peter. Peter was one of the most insecure guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Timid, you know sure. what I mean? Um, and, and yet when he partnered with Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. courage fills your heart. When you partner with Holy Spirit, courage sure. fills your heart. Mm-hmm. And so... You sometimes just need to do it afraid. Yeah. You sometimes just need to do it knowing that people... Look, if you just understand that people will reject you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People will mm-hmm. reject you. Mm-hmm. Just understand that. Why? Because not everyone believes in what you believe, yeah. number one. yeah. Not everyone is convicted about what you yeah. are convicted yeah. by, number yeah. two. Um, you're not everyone's favorite cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So people are going to reject you. We just need to learn to not take it personal. Sure. Um, we also need to be very established in our identity. So mm-hmm. we know, okay, okay, it doesn't mean um, there's something wrong with me, mm-hmm. you know, when someone rejects you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess when you just understand that people will always, uh, there they will be one person who mm-hmm. will reject you. And yeah. it's okay if they did it to Jesus, like, oh man, sure. you know what I yeah. mean? Um, it's not easy though. Yeah, it's not. Accepting that reality, yeah. you know. And I think that's why 
um, I, I always say um, healing is very much parallel to growth. Mm. There is no growth without healing. Sure. Not at least not with God. Yeah. Um, he will walk around the garden of your heart and say, especially if you allow him and mm -hmm. you say, I want intimacy with you. There is no intimacy with God without vulnerability with sure. God. You cannot be intimate with God without being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You cannot be intimate with your husband mm -hmm. without be being vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot be intimate mm -hmm. with my husband without being vulnerable. Sure. So um, when it comes to God, there, there is no way you can be intimate with him without being vulnerable. Mm. Right. Um, so where was I going Lord with this? Um, where was I going? I still have mommy brain. <laughs> Where was I going? Yeah. What, remind me of what I was saying. Courage. I was talking about courage and you were talking yes, about healing so and growth. growth. Yes. Mm. So um, in order for you to grow, you are sometimes going to allow, have to allow yes. Holy Spirit to walk through the garden of your heart and say, my baby, that wheat over there, I want to uproot it. Yeah. And he never does it on his own. Sure. He will partner with you in doing it because sure. God is not a harlot. He's not going to force himself mm. on you. He's not. Mm. Um, you need to give him permission. Mm -hmm. And so if we want to truly grow holistically mm. and grow fully, um, we are going to need to allow God to heal very sore spots. And sure. it's very painful. Mm -hmm. I'm currently going through that right now. I'm just mm. like, okay, God, this is hard. Sure. I, you know, I'm still having to show up. And I'm showing up, but in private, I'm going through such hard trials. Mm. And um, I was literally saying to him, look, you're good. Mm -hmm. There's no evil in you. Mm -hmm. You're powerful. Mm -hmm. I've been praying about this for a very long time. Sure. So I, it, it's, this is happening for a reason. Yes. You, I've prayed, you're supernatural, you're all powerful, mm. nothing, you haven't changed. I can't say nothing has changed just because, yeah, mm. I can't say nothing has mm. changed. But it's not changing the way I think yes. it should, but it doesn't mean God's not at work. Sure. So there is a reason for why I'm going through what I'm going mm -hmm. through, but it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. It hurts. It mm. hurts like crazy, mm -hmm. but it has to happen because there's certain parts of me that if God doesn't work on, will definitely hold me back when it comes to where God's taking sure. me. So the call of God on my life is sure. far too great and far too important for me not to allow him to deal with certain things in my heart mm -hmm. that can act as a hindrance if mm. I don't deal with them. Sure. Right? I so. think this this goes really well into intimacy with God, but also just on the courage point as well. Yeah. I think what I had to learn... Yeah is that fear of God needs to be greater than fear of man. Absolutely. Like, I cannot be afraid of what people are going to say Abs I over that. me, like, doing what God has called me what, to do. Yeah, absolutely. I have to fear God you just need to more obey. than I... <laughs> yeah, it just needs to be yeah. bigger. <laughs> yeah. Even though I'm afraid of them, it just has to be bigger. And I think yeah. that's why I love Jeremiah 1, that scripture that you were quoting, when it says, I have put my words in your mouth. In your mouth. Any time that I go speak somewhere or, like, even on the YouTube channel, I'm like, God, like that's my scripture that's like my covenant scripture the one that i hold on to to do what god has called me to do because yeah. i work in a, in a mental health hospital i okay. do group therapy like in my day-to-day -day work okay. and that's just what i meditate on like mm. god you've put your words in my mouth so mm. whatever i'm gonna say um it's gonna be from you sure sure that's good yeah that oof. <laughs> yeah what she said <laughs> so yeah let's talk about beloved awakened because yes. we've been we've like been. <laughs> yeah how did it come about it is yeah. such a big deal that i flew from cape town i remember to johannesburg to I come remember. to your conference i remember like that is how insane i remember and we have people flying from cape town durban oh, which i was word. not expecting hence i didn't make provision for but sure. yeah um so Beloved actually started as a prayer group. Um, I was sitting wow. in my room one day and um, I had this urge to just pray. Sure. Um, and to pray with a group of women. Wow. And so I remember one day saying, I'm doing this. I was so afraid. Oh my mm. gosh, guys. Like, I was so afraid. I was so timid back then. Um, but the conviction for people need to encounter wow. God drove me. Sure. So even though I was afraid and mm -hmm. um, timid and just felt like, oh, people are going to reject me. People are going to laugh at me. I'm going to embarrass myself, et cetera, et cetera. I was still driven by the mm. conviction. And so I did it anyway, mm. right? And so I would, I hosted, I remember hosting my first um, prayer uh, prayer gathering. And I think there were like eight 
eight eight to ten people who, who were there. Wow. Um, this is including my husband. <laughs> <laughs> this is including my husband wow. and the guy who plays the keys. Mm. So um, yeah, and and I I I, st- I put I put my all into sure. that, even when it was just ten people who were there. So we did deco, we had food, we wow. had keys, and sure. it's just like okay, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, it started off like that, and I knew that there was a deep hunger mm. that people had, um, not just to encounter God, but to walk intimately with Him and to experience the person of the Holy Spirit. Sure. Um, so yeah, hosted prayer, etc., and continued doing that. Um, and then when when we moved, I remember, you know, God telling us it's time to move and i didn't want to move because i still sure. love cape town if yeah. i could i'd still live in cape same, town same like, same 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 i'm just same. saying <laughs> i'm hoping one day we can settle down there yes. but um i love cape town it's mm. always going to be home for me but i remember the one day I, I i flew to durban with a friend a friend once said hey there's a conference happening in durban mm-hmm. i'm i've booked everything for you you sure. have to come and I was like, and 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 that time he was saying you and and Mukhale. and that sure. time we were not married, but he knew the call of God over our lives, and he said you have to come. Wow. Now Mukhale was an intern at Hillsong, so he sure. couldn't um, leave because he had mm. commitments. So then I left, and um, it's almost as if God had to take me away from that space so He could speak to me about such a big thing, a sure. life changing thing. That hey, I'm calling you to to job, but you have to leave. I was like, Kanja, and he's like, I don't get it. You're going to mm. have to confirm this. And he did three different times. Um, and the last confirmation for me was when um, Mahala said, hey, I've been feeling the need to move to Joburg. And I was wow. like, oh, Lord. You know, so sure. packed up everything, quit my job, came to Joburg, not knowing a thing, not mm. knowing what I was going to do. Um, and... Um, I went through a season of, it was just so hard because I was looking for where I can, it's like, how can I Nothing is coming up. Mm. Um, God, I went to this amazing university. Why am I not finding mm. work? You know what I mean? Um, but in that space, uh, in that time, I then decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to host uh, quarterly gatherings with, with wow. women. And, that's, and it started in my mom's backyard where sure. we capped it to 20 ladies only. And we would host every three months. We would host the B Connects. We we called it a beloved Connects, but it was wow. B Connects. And yeah, we would worship. We would pray. Sure. Um, there was always a message that God would, uh, would give me to to share with the ladies. Wow. Um, and then the one time we we had people saying, "Hey, like we we want to come," mm. but I obviously had to cap it to twenty ladies. Um, so we found a venue, and wow. then. Yeah, we had over 200. The first one we had, we had just over 200 ladies. Yes. And then the second one was where you came. Oh, okay. And then we had like, I think 250 or more, but sure. we had to cap it once again because the venue actually allowed 200 girls, but we, because of the demand, we mm. had to like say, okay, let's m- maybe have 50 more girls come. Sure. Um, so yeah, that's how that's how Beloved started. Oh I just word. started where I was for someone watching. I just started with something mm-hmm. as little as hosting prayer um, prayer gatherings, wow. not knowing what, what Beloved mm. would look like. But I just was obedient with that small thing. And sure. as I was obedient, as I took step one, God then showed me step two. Mm. Um, and in that, I also had to trust. Okay, you're leading me back to Joburg. Mm-hmm. For what? You know? Sure. And we get here and then we start sure. with, with Be Connect and... Um, yeah, that's that's how Beloved started. And then 2020 happened, so we couldn't have uh, the other gathering mm. that we actually had to per se. Guys, it's postponed because we had already started with the planning. Wow. Um, I think, yeah, COVID was announced in, in Ma- around March, March in 2020. Yes, yes. So, and we had started planning already because we were going to host in March. Sure. So March was always our, our month for our mm. first B-Connect. So, yeah, we had to postpone that. And then, obviously, 2020 happened and a whole lot happened. Yeah. And then we just couldn't gather uh, physically anymore. We sure. still had prayer times uh, virtually. So, mm. on, on Instagram, we would every every um, week we would host a live. Wow. Um, and we used to call it Wisdom Wednesdays. Mm. And we would have different speakers and speak to them and ask them questions, etc. Wow. And then we would still have prayer as well. So, just to keep the community going. And then... Yeah, and then I, it's the same year I got married, 2020, mm. same year, 2020, yes, I got married in 2020, yes, same year I got married, sure. but in December, mm. and then, yeah, man, things got really hectic, obviously, mm. I'd say six months after I got married, we fell pregnant, and a lot happened, mm. Um. so yeah, we had to just put a pause to Beloved. Sure, yeah. and it's back now. 
Back. And it's big. <laughs> and you it's have big. so many so amazing <laughs> get it's gonna go so oh well. My gosh. I mean the first oh well, it was the second Beacon X that I yeah. the the big yeah. uh gathering that you had that I went to, I was like my I was like it was worth the trip yeah. and a half. Like sure. it was just so you carry a very prophetic grace. Mm. So it was just so like in season. Mm. And that's the same with your YouTube videos. I'm always yeah. like in season for me. Yeah. Like it's so crazy. I'm like, this is so in season. And mm. I believe that Beloved Awakened, this conference, the Awakened Conference, will be super in season for every single person who will be there, including me. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 that's my prayer. Yeah. Um. Look, there's you said something about the prophetic and I, I, I always try and not talk much about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why I, I, there's something God is doing in this season. And, um, and I just, I want us to say yes to him. Sure. Um, it's already set in motion. Mm-hmm. It's already set in motion. He's already doing it. Sure. Um, whether we're going to, you know, hop on board mm-hmm. or not, he's already doing it. Um, God is waking a lot of his, 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 his people up. Sure. Right, people who were in slumber, people who were not as on fire for God, sure. um, people who were hurt and and therefore tired in the faith. Mm-hmm. And God is awakening a lot of His mm. people, and um, I can feel it in the spirit. Mm-hmm. He's spoken to me about it, sure. um, and so we knew about a, a, a awakening happening. In fact, we knew about it in it was supposed to happen in twenty twenty two. Wow. Initially in 2021, but mm-hmm. I was like, eh, eh, mm-hmm. I'm a new mom, mm-hmm. you know. Then 2022 was supposed to happen, but I still just that was like, like I said, one of the worst years of my life. Sure. There was no way I could host something then. And then last year, mm-hmm. close to the end, around August, my husband and I already knew next year it was supposed to happen mm-hmm. in March, but because of certain things, it didn't happen in March because, like I said, March was always our, mm-hmm. our first month. Um, but then we were like September. I think that's I the know. best month. I really I, think I, 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 I was born then. That's my anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> and the theme, awakening, it's spring, things are coming to life. Yes. I, and I didn't pay attention to that until one of my team members sure. actually said, hey, the theme. Because we were prophetic. talking about dress code, etc. And they were like, there's no way the theme dress code that you have in mind goes with the theme. Yes. Right? I had street style in mind. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so... Sure. We were like, we knew, my husband and I knew last year already, there's something about September. Yes. We might not know what it is, but there's something about September. Sure. And then we went into the sea and I was like, God, not, not everything's perfect mm. in my life right now. Um, in fact, I'm still going through the most, but I am going to be obedient mm. this time. I have to be. Sure. Um, so yeah, God is, there's a great awakening happening and it's, it's very evident. Mm. You, there's no way you can miss it. Sure. There's a great awakening sure. happening in our generation. And I know that I'm called for our generation. Mm-hmm. And so I just had to say, God, we're saying yes. I don't know what it's going to yeah, look like, yeah. but we're saying yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why even the speakers that are there, each and every one of them are uh, carefully selected. Mm. We prayed about it. Sure. Um, they're there intentionally. I know mm-hmm. that the Awakened Conference is very prophetic. Sure. Um, yeah, it's gonna. It's very prophetic. Mm-hmm. Um, it's... It's yeah, and so we have to really be dependent on the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. and so there were other people that you know, uh, my team suggested, or other people that I know around me mm-hmm. were saying, "Why don't you?" And I was like, "Not for this one," mm. because I understand maybe for the others, but yes. I know with this particular yes. one, I already know what God wants to do. Sure, uh, I might not have the full I like full picture, but mm-hmm. I know what God wants to do, mm. and um. I know the type of speakers who have to be sure. there, right down to the artists or the, the wow. worship leaders who wow. are going to be there. We had to, we had to literally pray about sure. it. Um, so, so yeah, I am nervous. Um, it's requiring mm-hmm. so much of me right mm-hmm. now, like so, so much. Mm-hmm. In order for that to happen as the founder, as the carrier, um, it's requiring a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's purpose all the time, though. Yeah. Like, it will always be greater than you. always be Because you and, need to and draw from him. The great I am, right? Because Absolutely. there's no way that you're going to be able to Absolutely. do it alone. Absolutely. Sure. Like, I'm so excited. I can feel it in my bones. And 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 like I said, I'm going through the most. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still, we're doing this. And so this is now a, another confirmation to someone that sure. um, never look 
at what's happening around you to yeah. determine whether God wants to use you or not. In fact, sure. I don't even want to use the word use because I don't believe that God uses us. I believe that God calls us mm. to partner with him. We're co-heirs with Christ. Sure. And so God will partner with you. Sure. And what what it looks like around you, the things that are happening, don't ever let those things determine whether it is time or wow. not. Like I said, opposition, attack, challenges will mm-hmm. always come because of the word God has spoken sure. over you. And sure. I am... Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, my family, and, we are experiencing and it. I feel like it's, the, it's, it's like those things that God has called you for yeah. that are attacked. Like if, you, if your marriage is called for um, ministry, that will be attacked. Absolutely. And for instance, which is what I wanted to get into, wellness. Yeah. You're super passionate about it. Yeah. But then you find that someone who is super passionate about wellness suffers postpartum depression yeah. and postpartum anxiety. Yeah. What does that look like? Like taking care. What, do, what is wellness to you? And what does it look like on a day to day? How do you know um, when you are well and when you're not? And what are some practical things you do to take care of your health? Yeah, I think um, this body is the temple of, of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. right? And so it's if it's the temple of the Holy Spirit, we need to be very much in tune with our bodies. And I think sometimes when we think of faith, we just think spirit and we forget Mm -hmm. everything else. God Mm -hmm. actually wants us to be very much in tune with our bodies because he uses everything. Mm. You can walk into a room right now and you have shivers and you know, I'm not supposed to be here. Like God uses everything to communicate with you. And so when I understood that and when I understood that I need to be okay in Mm -hmm. order for me to fulfill the purpose of God Mm -hmm. upon my life or to walk with him Mm -hmm. at least and fulfilling purpose, I need to be well. Mm -hmm. I I started taking seriously my wellness Mm. journey and that started in Cape Town. And I mean, Cape Town, come on, like that's the area where people are so focused on health and wellness and, you know, and so, um, yeah, it started then. Mm -hmm. I used to watch a lot of videos when it came to, um, uh, people who were vegan and why sure. they were vegan, even though I'm not vegan, but I watched a lot mm-hmm. of that. I wanted to understand their why. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched a lot of uh, YouTube videos on on healthy eating, mm-hmm. health. And so um, health for me had to be a conviction. I needed to understand, okay, God, yeah. you want me whole. Mm-hmm. This body is a temple of the Holy Spirit yeah. and it needs to be whole. I need to take care of it. Mm-hmm. I really need to take care mm-hmm. of it. Um, and then I think it's in First John 3, 20, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. but it says, beloved, I hope that you prosper even as your soul prospers. Yes. God, it's intentionally in the word of God because yes. it's the desire of God for us to be well. Mm-hmm. Um, also in, 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 in the gospels, we see Jesus after healing a young girl sure. or woman, he says, um, your faith has made you well. Mm-hmm. So there's a b- beautiful collide between faith and wellness. Mm-hmm. There's a beautiful collide between sure. faith and wellness. And um, that's where the conviction for me to be well started. Mm-hmm. Um, and so sure. I think it's 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 very important that we take care of our bodies. It's very important that we be in, be in tune with our mm-hmm. bodies. Because when we're not fine, our, your body will tell you yeah. you're not fine. Yeah. It's not some mystical thing. Yeah, it's not no. some... No, your body will actually tell sure. you you're not well. My body is currently telling me, Gabelo, you're not well. You're yeah. not taking care of me. Sure. Um, and I know that, mm-hmm. right? And that's why I am intentionally starting to, okay, I need to take care of this mm-hmm. body. I need to drink more water. Okay, I need to... You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, listen to your body. Sure. Listen to your body. Know that it is the desire of God for you to be well in Mm -hmm. all areas. Mm -hmm. Wellness, for lack of a better word or lack of a better phrase, is important to God. Mm. Um, Your mental wellness is important to God. Your emotional wellness is important Mm -hmm. to God. Your physical wellness is important to God. Your marital wellness is important Mm -hmm. to God or relational wellness is Mm -hmm. important to God. Your financial wellness is important to God. Wellness is important to God. Sure. Um, God wants us well. Mm-hmm. God wants us well because mm-hmm. when we're well, they, um, what what is this? Uh, I think he said something to me, and I'm just re- for, forgetting. Mm. Um, where there is health, there will always be growth. Mm, there will always be growth sure. where there is health. Mm-hmm. So you can say where there is wellness, 
where you are well, mm -hmm. you can grow. When yeah. you are well, you can grow, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the, the soil has to be well, has to be healthy, has to be fertile mm -hmm. for there to be growth. Yeah. So where there is health, there will always be growth. Yeah. So God God pays attention to that and mm -hmm. God, God takes it seriously. God mm -hmm. takes our, our health seriously. Um, God wants us um, healthy and whole mm. because life comes from that sure. as well. And yeah. God, obviously, we know God. He is life himself. Exactly. So, yeah. And you've mentioned so many things, like, just in our conversation in terms of what you do to be well. Mm. Going to therapy. Yes. Staying in relationship with God, waking up, Absolutely. prayer, listening to him, hearing him. Gym. We see you gymming on your <laughs> yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drinking water. Drink all your of water. That. Um, yeah. Take your, eat your, your vegetables, sure. eat mm -hmm. your fruits. Like, the beautiful, like, the most... Healthy things come from the ground. Wow. And, and God has made provision for that. Sure. That means God wants us to consume that. Yeah. You know, um, I, we've even gone as far as saying, Dad, my dad is now planting vegetables wow. on his garden. Um, sure. Or in his garden, rather. And so, yeah, we, we're prioritizing health. It's sure. Don't wait until you're older to prioritize yeah. your health. No, prioritize it now. No. Sure. You need it. Your kids need it. And everything concerning you needs you well. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I've grown so much from this conversation. Like, I just feel like it feels like a coffee date. It is. Where I'm just like, like, I think what I've taken most from it is that you don't need to have perfect circumstances nope. for God to partner with you and for you to live a life according to your purpose and the purpose and the calling that God has for you. It's yeah. been encouraging. It's been so real and authentic and guys if you've gotten this far um put three purple hearts down there <laughs> okay now i'm gonna ask you rapid fire questions okay yeah these you have to be honest questions. okay you have to be honest okay okay, okay. um I'll try. and you can't like not answer okay okay number one which brand has been your favorite collaboration this year oh is it just one just one um for now i'll say l'oreal nice why um i've worked with them i think we have a long-term relationship nice. and i love working with brands where we can actually build a long-term relationship mm -hmm. so um and that's only built when i know that they're happy mm -hmm. i'm happy i'm adding mm -hmm. value because mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day when it comes to working with brands i need to understand i'm adding value to you mm -hmm. and you are adding value to mm -hmm. me as well um and i i take them i don't often talk about it but i'll talk about it right now like mm -hmm. i said it, it, it comes with understanding who you are and and your position Sure. Whenever God opens that door for me to work with a particular brand, I don't just look at it as I'm working with this yeah. brand. Um, it's God, what value can I add? Yes, naturally, but spiritually, what value can I add as sure. well? So I actually pray for every wow. brand that I work with because I want them to, I, I want to make sure that, um, there's an impact I've made. Mm -hmm. So, wow, like our sales have increased mm -hmm. because we've worked with this person. I know it might not just be me, but mm -hmm. there must always be some kind of value sure. I add to the brand. So I love the fact that there is a long-term relationship mm -hmm. that I have with the brand. Um, and that makes me know, or it comforts me to know that there's some value I'm adding. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Um, if you could interview the guest of your dreams on your channel, who would it be? Yeah. Um, a guest of my dreams mm -hmm. on my channel. There are so many. For, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Stephanie Frizzle. I don't know how to say her. Oh, Gret her singer. Gret singer. Yes. Oh, yes. I love Definitely. her. I see that. Yeah. I see that. I see that. I yeah. love her. I love her. Yeah. Okay. Three words to describe your 2022. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, Banza. Yes. Um... Stretching, sure. Um, hard. Mm -hmm. Um, so stretching, hard. Ooh, painful. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Wow. But I mean, the fourth one, like, 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 incredible. Okay. So I had yes. my son. He's. Wow. Like, yeah, yeah, he's the best gift ever. He's so joyful. Like, like on your video, I'm him. just like, oh my word. Love him. Yeah, very, very cute. Favorite book you've read ever? Yeah, there's a lot. Um, 
But the thing is, I watched the actual movie, The Shack. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Like, I tried to watch the movie, but I... I mm. You struggled. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think The Shack, you need to really... Watch it with God. Okay. <laughs> um, take everything with a pinch of salt. But yes. Understand the messaging. Okay. I think for me, I watched it um, at a time where I really needed, I needed it. Mm, I get you. Yeah. I get you. I needed I get it. you. Okay. Last one. If you weren't doing what you're doing now, which career would you be in if you had to choose one? I think I'd be law. Sure. I see that. Really? I see that. Yeah. <laughs> Like, but I see like the advocacy part of yeah. law, not the attorney yeah. vibes. Okay, but even the attorney, because you write so well as well. I guess, but yeah, I definitely would be family. family yes, law. I love that. Mm. Sure. Cabello, thank you so much thank for coming. You. Like, I think this interview was exactly the way I thought, well, not interview, more like conversation, yeah. was exactly what I hoped for it to be. Just even more for me personally, mm. because I feel like I walked away with so much. Mm -hmm. um because sometimes even for the youtube i'm just like let's wait for everything to settle down yeah. be perfect and then i'll come back on when mm -hmm. i'm really smiling mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. instead of when i'm struggling mm -hmm. um and i think I've, I've learned so much not i think i know i've learned so much and i know the people at home watching this wherever they are have also like learned a lot and mm -hmm. thank you so much i can't wait to see you again at your yes. own conference yeah. and guys please please Subscribe to Cabello's channel, yeah. like, comment, subscribe to our channel, yes. like, comment, share this video with a friend, yes, share it on I'm Instagram, it. tag us. <laughs> yeah. And come to conference. Yes. That's, <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, purchase your tickets quick, guys, because yes. uh, we have limited, um, and it's not because we have limited seating, mm -hmm. we just have... We have a cut sure. um, and it's intentional for that to happen. Sure. So it's not about the seating, it's about the cut that we have. Mm -hmm. And we're very close to meeting oh that. My so. Word. That's why you saw the sold out yes, on my Yeah, no, there's still tickets. So just purchase okay. your tickets. Yeah. Okay, definitely yeah. going to do that. Thank you so Thank much. You. Sis. Thank I you. I really enjoyed this. It's such an honor. Such Thanks. an honor. Thanks. Bye guys. <laughs>